Hello everyone, this is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to my channel. In this video, we are going to have a look at a very interesting model called as VAR, which enables you to have scalable image generation that surpasses diffusion models with next scale prediction. We are going to install it locally and then we will check it out on some of the class labels on image data set. Uh, to see how to generate images locally. Before that, let's have a quick look as why exactly this model seems so promising. So this model, which is called as VAR or Visual Autoregressive Modeling, is a way to generate images. Autoregressive means learning the, uh, in which the model predicts the next part of the image based on what it has generated so far. Whereas next scale prediction means that the model starts with a rough, low resolution version of the image and then adds more details, gradually increasing the resolution. This is quite different from what we see in the traditional approach or the diffusion model approach. Both VAR and diffusion models are both generative models, but they differ in their approach to image generation. Diffusion models like uh, stable diffusion and various other generate images by iteratively refining noise until it converges to a specific image using a process called as denoising. In contrast, where generates images by predicting the next scale or resolution of the image starting from a coarse, low resolution version and adding details progressively. This makes where a more explicit hierarchical generative process, whereas diffusion models rely on an implicit iterative refinement process. So that is the whole idea behind it. And if you go to their GitHub repo, you will see that these are some of the sample images that have been generated and they look not bad at all. Not as vibrant and crystal clear as Flux, I would say, but still not bad. And Remember that this is a totally new process, so I'm more than sure there will be more and more refinements. If you look at this diagram, this tells you about its architecture, which I was explaining earlier about autoregressive nature of this by use, just doing the next image token generation. As you can see here, this is how it just refines the characteristics of the uh, resultant image. Okay, so that's said and done. Let's go and try to install it and run it. Before that, let me give a huge shout out to Mast Compute who are sponsoring the VM and GPU for this video. If you're looking to rent a GPU on very affordable prices, I will drop the link to their website in video's description. Plus, I'm also going to give you a coupon code of 50% discount on range of GPUs. This is my Ubuntu system and this is my GPU card, NVIDIA RTX A6000 with 48 GPU of VRAM. Let's create a virtual environment. Okay, so now let's install all the prerequisites. Okay, let me paste my, uh, or maybe we will just git clone the repo again, that is fine. And I will drop the link to it in video's description. Repo is done. Let's now install all the prerequisites, which include a lot of stuff around torch torch vision torch audio and transformers let's wait for it to get installed this takes around a couple of minutes and that is done now let me launch my jupyter notebook and the notebook is launched let's first download the model and the checkpoints and i will also drop the link to this notebook which has been provided by the researchers which you can use now in this code, it looks a bit scary, but it's not. So all there is uh, to it is that they are just simply um, using this code for generating images using a variational autoencoder, which is a VAE, which converts the model from latent space to pixel space. And then it also is using this classifier free guidance model, which is where and classifier or CFG or classifier free guidance mean, means that this actually guides the model as per our own prompt and then it is primarily importing all the necessary libraries it's, it is disabling default parameter initialization for linear and layer norm layers in pytorch for faster execution and then afterwards it is specifying the model depth which is 16 and also asserts that it is one of the allowed values and then um, it is downloading two checkpoints you can see 
and then it is building the v model and the where model using the build v where function loads the downloaded checkpoints in the v and where models sets the model to evaluate mode and freezes their parameters and then it is um, in the next one i will also show you where it is displaying the generated image so let me run this it is going to take a bit of a time and you can see that the model download has started it is running and it is going to print all of this so let's wait for it to finish should not take too long it is just an old way of downloading the models it's a, still a research project it seems okay anyway so i will just wait for it to load to go to 100 percent and the models have been downloaded and prepare is finished next up let's do the inference and for inference so what this code is doing um, this code is using the image net data set and then um, because that these models have been already pre-trained on that and this data self is not being downloaded the code is using these models now what is happening here is that this code is generating an image based on the class labels specified in the class labels variable and if you just scroll down sorry if you just scroll up you see these are the class labels and these are coming from the image net data set if you don't know what ImageNet is, ImageNet is an image database which has been organized according to the world net hierarchy and it is one of the best data set for computer vision and deep learning and I believe this is uh, maintained by Stanford and Princeton and it is free for non-commercial usage. Okay, so now we know what is happening. Let me start running it and it should pop up an image as per those labels there you go so these are the image and i'll just bring it down so you see these are the class labels here and then from that image net data set it has generated these images on the basis of those class net label how good is that let me also show you the vram consumption so it is just around 5.5 gig that's it very very fine models so next up what i have done is i have just put in other class labels by going into image net data set and you can check the labels with the images and then i'm just specifying a new one so let's generate these images now let me run it there you go totally different images this time human forms are a bit malformed but i think this could be improved with a better prompt but look at this one this looks really cool I think really good start for this model of course there is a lot of improvement uh, room for improvement from their uh, hugging face page they also say that they have this where platform demo i have been trying to get it working op to open it it's not working really so i'm not sure if that demo is live or not so i'm uh, but anyway we already have seen it how it works on our local system I hope that you enjoyed it. What really uh, I'm happy about is that now we have another way of generating images in addition to diffusion and lot of other variants of it. Hopefully this will improve with the passage of time and we will see more and more models around it. Let me know what do you think about it. If you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you are already subscribed, please share it among your network as it helps a lot. Thank you for watching.